gonna continue rolling, but. So when you say, oh, we're gonna do this really technical move, but we're gonna do as many reps as we can for time, these are really dangerous things to be doing for time. It's not an air squat, right? It's not as many push-ups as you can do, oh, by the way, with good form, and your form becomes compromised. By the time I was on the 10 to 1, like burpee 1,575, I was a mess. I, I looked like crap, my phone was falling apart. It wasn't focused. So that's another part that I, I don't understand taking modalities that are so intense and so technical and doing them for time. I, Why do we take these intense movements and do them for time? Hmm. I mean, you don't have to do them for time. You want to do it. Like, that's where intensity comes from. Reps over time, you know. The faster you do something, the more reps you're going to do over a given period of time. But, you know, where your form breaks, when your form starts to break down, you as the athlete have to take some sort of responsibility and move with some sort of virtuosity and good form you know that's up to the athlete that's up to the person that's up to a good coach you know a good coach should should call that out and be like look you know you're, you're kind of moving crappy fix it up or you know that's when that's where injury comes and th and that's to be said about anything not just crossfit you know you can have bad running form bad running economy you know and you you can have shin splints, your ankles could be busted, your knees could be busted because you're just not running properly. It could be said about anything, powerlifting. You know, you can do good powerlifting or you can do bad powerlifting. You can, this could be said about anything. At the end of the day, the individual has to take some sort of responsibility. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah, let's continue. It doesn't personally make sense to me. Uh, in another um, another time, I saw Greg Glassman, who was the original founder, talking about how he didn't believe in muscle splits. I don't know if that's changed, but muscle splits are when you say, okay, I'm going to train certain muscles on certain days, and then I'm going to let them rest while I train other muscles on other days so that I can get optimal recovery. Now, you might build in a rest day after three days of CrossFit, which wasn't a thing five years ago when I had friends that were obsessed with it, but it is now as far as I can tell. But if you don't believe in muscle splits and you're killing yourself as hard as you are in CrossFit day one, then you're going to go do it again day two. Then you're going to do it again day three. And the exercises are pull up, push up, sit up, squat, wall, ball, battle rope. Like we're not saying we're doing push muscles on Monday, and we're gonna let them rest for a few days. So if you're doing the same exercises for three days in a row, I don't understand, I don't understand that training plan. I, I don't understand it. And to me, I don't understand it. All right. And to me, All right, so basically, muscle splits is more, I'm just gonna say something quick about this. Muscle splits is when you split up your exercises to target different muscle groups at different times. So let's say you're doing a push day, you're doing all push exercises, or you're doing antagonist, uh, agonist, antagonist muscles. You just, it, it's more of a bodybuilding style, but it can, that, that style kind of bleeds into CrossFit. You know, what's, what's crazy, what's amazing about our bodies is how it adapts to just the stuff that we put it through, you know? You see it all the time, you know, a person who never trains, you know, the first couple of weeks is always the hardest, but then the body adapts. The body, wow, five push-ups used to be so hard week one. Now I'm doing 10, I'm doing 15, I'm doing 20. I can do 100 now a month later, two months later, I'm doing 100 push-ups. When at the beginning, I couldn't even do five. Like your body adapts to stuff that is hard, you know, and she's more what I'm seeing through this video is she's very very conservative approach to to training and it, and it has to be perfect form I agree it has to be perfect form you know I'm I'm an advocate of form I, I think that proper form is above all else the most important thing in, in in any physical activity whether you're doing anything you know but 
at the highest level, at elite competition, when you're in a competition, it, it's inevitable that form will be compromised. Form ha like when you, to say power. I'm I know I'm crapping on powerlifting. I love po power powerlifters. Shout out to powerlifters. You guys are strong as shit, but it's it's kind of ignorant to say that a oh, powerlifter on a competition day where his goal is to hold is to lift the maximum amount of weight it's inevitable that his form will break down to some to some degree you know but what's important is that he's all throughout his training leading up to that his form is impeccable he's doing muscle splits he's doing progressive he's progressively overloading his body with perfect form to then get to that competition where he can kind of sacrifice his form to optimize his his uh, maximum load. So uh, she has a bit of a conservative approach. I just want to continue with this. This is about two two minutes thirty left. So we're gonna continue. When you train in particular as hard as you do in a CrossFit workout, you need time to recover. So I wouldn't want to do a workout that hammered hammered my back or my chest and then hit those muscles again the next day or even a third day in a row um i'll be honest with you every friend i have who was into crossfit had a serious injury um you need new friends if your friends don't do crossfit <laughs> serious whether it was a heart attack or a shoulder issue or you name what I, personally, I've known probably seven people over the last decade who were really into it. All seven are no longer doing it for those reasons. Um, not to say you can't be a CrossFitter and be in great shape, but it depends on the quality of your coach and the athlete. See, that I can agree with. The quality of the coach, the quality of information and, and how you interpret that information and, and what you do with that information. In you know education is key. I think what is it? Give a man a fish, feed him for a day. Teach a man, teach a man how to fish, feed him for life. Like this is good form and, and, and proper technique and and moving with virtuosity and pro, and good form lends itself to a life a life long lived. You know you can take that and that's going to stay with you forever that is engaged in that modality right so for me you look i i love that people love crossfit i love that they love working out i love that they love the community it provides but i wouldn't even i wouldn't even want somebody doing a yoga workout every day i wouldn't want you running every day or all right so this this just proves that she's super conservative i mean the best exercise is the exercise that you're actually gonna do. So if you love to do CrossFit, I mean, if you love to do yoga, if you love running every day, like just just go do it. You know, or being in the fitness space, the you you gotta kind of support any feat or any any activity that people want to do, whether it's playing sports, whether it's running, swimming, hiking. If you like doing burpees every single day, do burpees every single day. You know, so she she does have a very conservative approach on on a lot of things. Like, oh, you gotta stay within the lines. I, I get it. I trust me, I get it. But all right, we're just gonna continue with this. Three days in a row, crazy running workouts. Or I, this is where personally, I would say if you love it, great. Find an unbelievable coach. And honestly, I think I think for CrossFit, you need somebody with a degree. Your coach should have a degree in exercise science. I would not be screwing around with Olympic lifts and gymnastics and all these really advanced modalities. See here, does a degree really mean you know Olympic lifts? Like, I, there's a lot of people with degrees that don't really know Olympic lifts. Look, at the end of the day, if you want to learn somebody, seek out an expert within that field or within that exercise or within if I want to learn how to run I go seek out a running coach or people who know how to run if I want to play soccer I go see somebody who wants to learn how to play soccer so the same thing is just because he has a degree doesn't mean he knows everything about fitness you know I'm pursuing a degree in that and I don't know a lot of stuff a lot of things about 
you know, I can still learn a lot from a power lifter or, you know, a gymnast or, you know, it, this is just, we're just constantly learning through this whole, this whole journey. We're going to continue. Unless you've got somebody who knows how to modify and program those workouts for the athletes in their class. And I wouldn't do it more than twice a week. Twice a week is good with at least two days off between sessions. So you know, at the very least, you are programming solid recovery if you're gonna train that hard. So those would be my personal recommendations is if you love it, don't do it more than twice a week, separate the days, make sure your coach is top, top, top quality if you're going to engage in a modality that advanced. And I mean, this is my this is my personal opinion. Sorry if you don't agree with me. Not here to bash anyone, um, but that's where I fall on it. Hmm. All right, so we're just gonna conclude what we have found. <laughs> Look, she makes she makes a lot of good points. I agree with her on a lot of a lot of what she said, but there's there's it's easy to point out you know, the things that she doesn't quite know or quite understand. Look, the, the principles of training, specificity, overload, individuality, diminishing returns, all these things, you know, should be applied to anything. Anything you want to do in life, you should apply those because it's all about putting one foot in front of the other, one foot in front of the other. You know, uh, to say she didn't make this for clicks, I think she made it for clicks. You know, CrossFit could be done properly. It's not dangerous. I've gotten hurt playing soccer more than anything, any other injury in CrossFit. So I think uh, there's there's a lot of stuff to 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 pull away from this. I think she makes some some good points, but all in all, she she has her own opinion. She has her own way of doing things. I'm not gonna bash her. She's she's very successful. She, she's on plenty of reality TV shows. She she has her own way of doing it, and CrossFit has their own way of doing it. Instead of you know splitting these two ideas we should just come together and just bounce ideas off. i think all fitness aspects all fitness modality whatever you want to call it should all come together and just we should just promote fitness instead of just you know bashing you know bashing stuff for clicks you know crossfit crossfit's building up it's catching up uh, you know uh, cr crossfit's on the rise it's getting some hype it's getting it's it's a sport in its infancy, but it's growing rapidly. You see all these cool these cool athletes like Matt Fraser doing these 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 amazing feats of athletic before these guys are strong, they can walk on their hands, they can run, they can all they can do all these cool modalities. They might not be the best at them, but they're able to do such a wide variety uh, of activities. And I think that CrossFit the one thing that CrossFit does is they have defined fitness. Defining fitness, I think they've given the best definition, and their athletes, rep you know, their athletes speak for themselves. They have phenomenal athletes. They move incredibly well, and it, it, they look good. So, so yeah. What are you gonna do? That was my immediate reaction to Julian Michaels. No hate here. I, I congratulate her. She's done phenomenal things. She should, uh, I, I'd encourage her to do more CrossFit. Do Murph, do Murph. So all in all, at the end of the day, good form, learning something properly is above all else the most important thing when you want to learn physically you know, exercise, physical, any, any movement, anything. It requires progressive overload. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and you just gotta take baby steps, seek out proper information in anything, CrossFit, yoga, whatever the hell you, when you wanna climb hills, it's kind of crazy, but hey, I don't judge. If you like to climb hills, I me mean, you no know, judge, you know? But hey guys, if you guys really enjoyed this type of video and want to see more of this more of these kinds of videos leave it in the comments don't forget guys to like and subscribe thank you so much for tuning in
to this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. I know I have to shave. Peace.